two or three to share this morning. On last Sunday morning, I shared with you that Brother Rogers Harrison had coded that Saturday night, but he was revived. That Sunday evening, he coded again. And it didn't look good, but he was revived again. <coughs> On Friday afternoon, I got a call. It was his daughter on the phone, and Brother Rogers was talking on the phone. <laughs> but yet he was fussing on the phone. Y'all pray that he leave that crap in alone. But uh, let's give God some praise for that. Sister Katie is here today. Let's give God some praise. Amen. She broke out that walker today. That's the church house walker. Glad to see y'all today. But we've got another miracle in the thing. Sister Brenda, the last time she was here, she had a heart attack. But she's here today. Chapter 33, I want to begin with verse 27 and we will conclude with verse 29. And when we read from the oracles of God, we see the promises of God 
And we already know that the promises of God are yea and amen. In other words, if he said it, it's settled. And that's enough to shout over right there. So I want you to put yourself in the place of the children of Israel as this final benediction, this final promise of Moses is being uttered from his lips to them. And uh, if it strike your fancy, you don't have to wait for a cue to be pushed or prodded. If this promise meets your life, you ought to give God a praise where you are and thank him for what he's doing. The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee. And shall say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. And also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee. O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellence, and thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their places. So is the reading of his word. Father, we pray as you have been faithful to do, we will trust you to do it again. Give ears to hear and hearts to receive. And because it is all about you, we'll be careful to give you the praise. Again, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight through you. I strength and our redeemer. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to speak from this subject this morning, a headliner for God's people. A headliner for God's people. Something that's highlighted and lifted for the people of God. Thank you, Rexus. Bless you today. The Bible is a book of precious promises. It answers every need of man. And all we need to do is stay close to the book and listen to him. And I guarantee you there is a promise of God that will address every area of life. For the perplexities of life, that's when you have pain and problems that's beyond your control and I guess I don't need to say that if you live long enough you're going to see your degree of pains and you're going to see your degree of problems but be of good cheer yeah. because the same, the, the same Jesus who overcame the world yeah. will help us overcome every problem and pain in life when there are moments of poverty, when we, we lack and we're limited, isn't it amazing how God will just open up the windows of heaven? And you don't even know where the blessing is coming from. You don't know when the blessing is coming, but somehow, some way, it shows up and it's always on time. Y'all do know that God is in the blessing business. Yes. And you really can't beat him blessing. I like that scripture saying that he who give it to the poor, lend it to the Lord. Yes. When it simply says because God is not dead to anybody, yes. that anything you give that God's going to, I wish I had a witness here, yes. God's going to more than abundantly cover your needs. 
But moments of passivity in life, and these are moments when we are seized by fear. We are stricken by fear. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. We don't know how we're going to make it. When we, are, when we have those moments, we ought to have faith in God. That whatever we're going through, God's going to see us through. And so we ought not be afraid. We ought not be, as Esther said, scared. We ought to move on for the glory. You need a word from God. You need a word that is unfaltered. That it is, there is no fault in his word. Yeah. And I don't care who you are, you can search this from Genesis to Revelation. You will not find any errancy in God's word. What we may encounter is the errancy of man in interpretation, but there is no error in God's word. His word is unfaltering. His word is unfailing. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our Lord shall do what? Stand forever. So you need a word that will stand in your life. You need a word of God that will enlighten you when you need to when you need information, when you need inspiration, when you need instructions on what to do, you need to go to the book. Uh, my auntie, she, she didn't go into anybody's school, but she had enough sense to know, to tell me that, what, that, that you need to stick to the book. And if you stick to the book, everything is going to be all right. In this text, this is Moses final word to the children of Israel. In chapter 34 you will see where he goes to this place it's called Nebo. And in Nebo two things will happen immediately. Number one that would be an observation. God is going to show Moses what he had promised to the children of Israel. Yeah. And that would be a quick obituary because it would be there that Moses would leave this earth that God will be his undertaker. Are y'all with me now? And God will attend to the body of Moses himself. So actually Moses is giving to us, to the children of Israel, his final words. Can I help y'all here? When you get to that place of finality, you don't have time for foolishness. Are y'all with me? It has to be a final word. It has to be a fruitful word. You've got to have something that you're going to share. And these are the last words. He's pronouncing a blessing upon the tribes of Israel. They are final. They are faithful. But thank God, they are blessing words. Are y'all with me? He says to Reuben, this is the blessing. Live and not die and multiply. He says to Judah that his hands would be sufficient for his sustenance. He says to Levi, you have the role of a priest. You have a priestly garment and ornaments to serve and you will be the teacher of the children of Israel. He says to Benjamin that you will dwell in safety that because he's covered. He says to Joseph that God's going to bless his land. And the promise that went to Joseph poured over to Manasseh and Ephraim that as Joseph will be blessed, Ephraim and Manasseh will be blessed. Yeah. I am smart. I'm giving y'all some words you ain't never heard. Zebulon, he says to them, rejoice and go out. Can I help y'all here? Oh, yeah. Is that if, if, you, if you step out in praise, if every step you take is in praise to God, and why do you do that? Does it make sense? 
when you think about what the Lord has done for you, when you contemplate what he's going to do, and when you soak yourself in what he's doing in your life, every step ought to be a step of prayer. Can I help you here this morning? That if you had to come here to get your praise on, you left your praise at the wrong place. But if you woke up this morning with your mind stayed on the Lord, you can step out in praise for who he is. Are you with me? He says, here's a car. He said, in thy tents, you will be full. And check him out, that you're going to find hidden treasures in sand. That was a man, I was watching one of the uh, internet stories. Someone had dropped a ring in a field. And so he had one of those gadgets to find metal. He was looking for a ring. But guess what he found? He found a stash of gold. I wish I had a witness. I'm going to order me one of them on any day. Are y'all with me? And the scripture says that 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 is a car will find treasures that's hidden in the sand. Can I help y'all here? The, the, the treasure didn't get there by itself. God put the treasure there so for the right time and for the right person. So when you get there, the blessing will be there waiting on you. He said to Dan, you'll be like a lion. He said to Dan, you'll be the son of a lion that leaps. Are you with me? He says to Nephtali, you will be satisfied with favor. That ought to be a shout right there. When you don't have finances and you got favor, you can make it. When you don't have good health and you got favor, you can make it. When you can't rub two nipples together, but God keeps putting food on your table, you can make it with favor. Are you with me? Then he says to Asher that blessings will be upon your children. And then in chapter, verse 27, he moves from the individual blessing to the collective blessing. And he begins in verse 26. Let me help you here. He begins by saying to the children, to, 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 to the children of Israel collectively, there is none like our God. Are y'all with me? There is none like him who rideth upon the heaven and his excellence is in the sky. Friday night, open out the company from Houston from a funeral. I just, it was dark and looking toward the east, we could see the moon rising in a beautiful array. She pulled out this camera while we drive, it just won't work. But it was just something to behold how beautiful it is. And that's what happens when God's love and affection is upon us. He shows us something beautiful every day. His excellence is in the sky. Here it is. What is this blessing that's highlighted? Verse 27 8. The eternal God is our refuge. Write this down. God is our hiding place. The eternal God is our refuge. God is our hiding place. Are you with me? The eternal God says he's our hiding place, first of all, because he rules. I got a glimpse of that in old school. I, knew, I heard folk would pray, God, you rule, but then they throw some words from even in the dictionary. You super rule. Are y'all with me? He is eternal, which is to suggest 
that you can never exhaust him. Yeah. You can never really discover him. Yes, he displays himself in a marvelous way because he is eternal. Yeah. He rules eternally. Yeah. And because he rules, guess what we can do? We can rest in him. He is our, the eternal God is our refuge. And that's the place where you find safety and security and surety in the presence of the Lord. God is our hiding place. How many times have we heard when trouble comes, I go to the rock. The servant said, the Lord is our refuge. He is our hiding place. Verse 27b, the eternal God is our refuge. And then this is what he says, and underneath are his everlasting arms. Are you with me? God is our hiding place, but God is our helping place. Yeah. Yeah. Under his arms. Are you with me? Right. It says to me that he grips me. Yeah. His grip supports me. Yes, sir. That I'm in his hand. Yeah. Not all state. Yeah. Because they have already proved to us yeah. that they say we're in good hands. As long as you don't need help. Right. But the minute you file a claim, they get fined. Are y'all with me? We get dismissal notices. But God's hand will never leave you. His hand sustains us to caress us and to hold us. His grip supports us. He's our helping power. He's our hiding place. His grip supports us. But because we are in his hands, holding, his hand is holding us. And we are in his hands. He got his hands on us. Even when we don't deserve it, he's got his hands on us. His grace sustains us. Are y'all with me now? And it's good to be in God's hands. Yeah. He'll hold you. Yeah. He'll keep you. Yeah. He'll rock you in the midnight hour. Yeah. Won't it do it? Yeah. He's our hiding place. Yes, He's our helping place. Yeah. But there's one more thing he said. Verse 27c says, and he shall. Our hiding place, our helping place, and it is here, our hope is proclaimed. And he shall. I've already said to you, he said it's settled she might as well shout about it. It's before it happens, but because he said it, you can say it's already done. Are y'all with me? You can go ahead and catch it because he said it. What does he say? And he shall. Verse 27c says he'll thrust out the enemy. What he's going to do, he's saying to the children of Israel, I'm going to pro provide for you a place. Yeah. Remember now, they were leaving Egypt. They were headed to the promised land. Yeah. And there are inhabitants in the land. They don't know it yet. Uh -huh. But an eviction order has already been signed. And all of the doors was waiting on the children of Israel to come to claim what God had for them. 
for their lives because he was providing a place for them. Yeah. I get a glimpse of that in Psalm 23 when David said he prepares a table before me yeah. in the presence yeah. of my enemy. Yeah. God will provide a place. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Verse 28a says that you shall dwell in the, in the, in the land safely and you do it alone. So there is a place that's provided. There is a personal protection. Are y'all with me? That God's going to watch over you while you're in the place that he has provided for you that you shall dwell safely yeah. and nobody will bother you. Yeah. But then he says in verse 28b, there will be a plenteous provision. He says there will be corn and wine. I said hallelujah. Are y'all with me? Corn sustains us. Wine satisfies us. Corn meets my earthly need, yeah. my physical need, yeah. but wine soothes me. Yeah. Don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Are you with me now? And what God is going to do, he's going to sustain us, and he's going to satisfy us. Yeah. Want to do it? Yeah. Verse 28 C, he said his heavens his heavens will be open and the dew drops will come from the heavens. There will be an outpouring, a pouring out of his promises. Can I take you to what he said in Malachi? That he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. In other words, wherever you go, God's got a promise that's commanded to meet you. Are y'all with me now? So it doesn't matter where you are. If you just look up to the hill, God's got a blessing with your name on it. In verse 29, that's a platform for praise because it says, happy. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Happy are you? Yeah. And I don't know what disposition you came with today, but I'm happy yeah. because every time yeah. I think of the goodness of Jesus, yeah. every time I think of the ways he made for me, yeah. every time yeah. I remember the healings that he provided along the way, Every time he opened doors that were closed. Every time he closed doors that was open. Every time he met me in a dying need. Every time when I didn't have a dime in my pocket, he put an ornament check in the bank. Every time I needed something. Because of your distinction, yes, who is like unto thee, yeah. ain't nobody like you. Yeah. Because God's got his hands on you. Yeah. God's got his favor on you. The enemy can't do you any harm. Yeah. Because God's got his hands on you. That's your distinction. Yeah. But then he said, you are where you are. Yeah. Because I have saved you. That's your salvation. You have to get in praise for that. And then along the way, there has been protection. Yeah, God won't. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. But God has protected me. See, yes, my Lord. But finally, this is 
what he says. That thou shalt tread upon their high places. So somewhere along the way, even in the midst of a desert, across the Red Sea, there will be an elevation. Y'all don't hear me? Something that's going to raise you over your enemy. And you ought to give God praise for your distinction that you've been put in high positions. Thank you. 
I want to give a little testimony if I can, just just a brief brief, brief testimony. I was you know, I, I was on my way to church this morning and uh, running a little late as usual. I'm rushing to church, rushing trying to get here. Pam and Jayla drove. I, I drove myself. So I said, well, I better stop and get, get my time here. Stopped up here at uh, Wells Fargo, right here in Grove. You know, we got the two, two lanes. So I pull up to the outside lane. The machine is out of order. It's out of order. So I backed up. See, I'm going to get this other lane. You know how you have that backup sensor on your, on your, on your truck? I backed up and it did go off, but didn't go off in time. So I backed up, tore the whole side of my truck up, hit that yellow pole. I mean, I was going to get time money. I was doing the right thing. Going to get time money, backed up, tore my whole light up. So I thought about it. The devil got business. You're getting time money. You're going to need some money to get that truck for you. <laughs> you better go on about your business. So I said, no. Got out the truck, picked up my light, which is torn off. <laughs> picked it all up, picked up all the glass, and moved in the other lane. And said, so I'm going to get my time. Because God has been too good to me. Yeah. Even in the midst of our misfortune, God is still good. I know I got to get this life fixed, but this, but this song popped up in my head. Well, be not this baby. Y'all ain't feeling it. Whatever the time, no matter what you're going through, God will. Do I have a witness in the house today? You've been through some rough stuff. You've had some tough times. You've had some misfortune happen in your life. Be Father, in the name of Jesus, before we ask you anything, before we bring our petitions to you, before we lay our cares at your feet, we just want to say thank you. Because you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We just want to say thank you. Because there are some of the good things that we enjoy right now. We know we don't deserve it. But you've been a God who looked beyond every one of our faults. And you saw every one of our needs. God, we want to say thank you because if it had not been for you healing our body, if it had not been for you opening doors that no man can close, if it had not been for you making a way, we don't know where we'd be. Lord, thank you. Could have been messed up, should have been messed up, but your grace and your mercy protected us, watched over us, looked Lord, we want to say thank you. As your word said today, you are our refuge. You are our strength. You are a very present help in the time of need. Lord, we're here today. We've got a lot to be thankful for because you are healing from cancer. You are healing from heart attack. You are healing. Father, you are in the healing business. And we just want to say thank you. We've got witnesses here today that if we look at them, Father, we, we come to the conclusion that there is no secret what you can do. Because if you've done it for somebody else, yes. if we stay in our blessing line, Father, yes. we'll be next. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Not only are we conquerors, but we're more than conquerors. Father, help us hold on until our change comes. Help us hold on until our healing takes place. Help us hold on until you open that door. Help us to hold on just a little while longer. Father, I know it hurts. I know we gotta cry sometimes. 
help us, Father, to hold on. Because we know that you can do. We know what you can do. We know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. We know that you're able. Thank you for being an able God right now. In the name of Jesus, no plot, no plan, no attack that Satan has shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing in this place. In the name of Jesus, we declare wholeness in this place. In the name of Jesus, we declare safety in this place. In the name of Jesus, we receive your power right now. We receive your power right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare that everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Give God some praise. Amen. Let us stand. Amen. We thank God for our special guest, Dr. Ford. We thank you for the prayer. Felt that. Thank you so much. Amen. Again, we thank Pastor Scott. Thank you for that word. Thank you for that word. That was that was encouraging. That's something portable that we can take with us. Amen. Now let's have our benediction. Father, in the name of Jesus, again, we thank you for your word. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Help us leave this place, not just hearing your word, but ready to do your word. In Jesus' name we pray now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Father, be honor and majesty, dominion and 